Queen City News starts now. This will be a hardship, not only for the restaurants and their owners, many of which have voluntarily closed, but also on their customers who find comfort at their chairs and tables. Well, exactly two years ago, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper announced that bars and restaurants would be closing as a way to curb the spread of COVID. Well, that led to scrambling last minute plans to cover and offer everything from drive through service at restaurants and bars and also many businesses not lasting through the worst of the restrictions. So today we wanted to revisit one of the places that we profiled two years ago when those restrictions first hit on how the pandemic hit them and how they're dealing with it right now. Queen City News reporter Derek Dellinger joins us live in Davidson. Derek, the places that we spoke with two years ago actually did hold up a lot better than a lot of other businesses. Yes, and it's hard to believe, but this time two years ago, we were talking about St. Patrick's Day celebrations not happening and essentially closures and restrictions at many types of businesses that were be in place essentially for weeks. Now, weeks turned into months. Bars and restaurants essentially became drive throughs And while we're not really out of the woods just yet, we wanted to get a sense of where things stand today with the businesses that we talked with two years ago. In two years, a lot can change. And two years ago, everyone was wondering what was coming next. The anxiety was palpable. It's scary. It's scary for us. It's scary for our friends. This was Katie Kindred two years ago today. Restaurants were forced to close to sit down service, offering only takeout because of the pandemic that was just then getting underway. Places like Kindred took a hit. Two years on to the day. How are things? Wow, two years on to the day. Um, man, I mean, honestly, it's, it's light years better, obviously. Katie Kindred spoke with us today on the anniversary. She says then there was a great deal of uncertainty and anxiety. She knows a lot of shops tried, but could not make it through. Kindred has, but it hasn't come without some pandemic pain. The hardest part for, you know, it was letting everybody go, you know, and we had to lay off over a hundred people in one day, which was probably the most emotionally difficult um, day ever. The bounce back has been slow and methodical and largely based on restrictions slowly easing. Kindred says her restaurant is about as back to normal as it can be, with the exception of another pandemic effect, supply chain issues. The atmosphere is a lot different too. Everyone's a lot more careful now. We caught up with Ani O'Hanion. She lives in Mint Hill, but made her way to Davidson for music classes. Each time she's driven here, she says she slowly noticed differences. Things, she says, are getting better. It's nice that we're not all wearing masks anymore. We can <laughs> yeah. see smiles again. Yeah. But mask wearing is still a requirement at some places in town. Kindred says right now, though, even with things still uncertain on COVID, there's a change in perspective and on expectations. We're just grateful that we're here still. We're grateful that we're thriving. We're grateful our team is healthy. Um, so there's definitely a lot of gifts, a lot of things to be grateful for. And so we try and focus on that and not not as so much the challenges. Now, we should mention that Davidson has fared better than many other places since the beginning of the pandemic. They have a very high vaccination rate here, as well as very low COVID numbers. This has been pretty consistent throughout the pandemic over the last two years here. Now, we asked Kindred about that, about her confidence level as going into this. And she says part of that confidence level has to do with those numbers as she heads into the rest of the pandemic. Whatever comes up next, she says she'll be ready for it. Live in Davidson, Derek Dellinger, Queen City News. Tracking COVID across North Carolina, we're seeing another day with more than 1,000 cases reported. And hospitalizations are still continuing their slow trend down. And percent positives for testing remains around 2.5% that you see there.